Okay, here we go with another one. So once again, we're in 3.0 uh, deployment uh, deployment of Cloud Plus, uh, CompTIA's uh, the latest 003 exam. Um, and this is 23, this, uh, this three section is 23% of the test. We're on 3.2, given a scenario, uh, provision storage in cloud environments. And I, I should mention a lot of these, so they say given a scenario. Uh, so just knowing the terms are not sufficient. Uh, so you need to kind of understand how you would deploy a specific thing in a specific scenario, but we'll, we'll just keep going. Um, so that's 3.2 right here. I'm just going to copy that. So I'll have it for later and let's get going. So storage. Uh, so there's different types of storage. Uh, there's block storage is what you're used to sticking in your file system. It's just a bunch of of areas you buffer to send stuff to it um, and that's how it's worked with the OS but then there's file storage this is kind of like for example network attached storage where uh, you're not changing the bits you're changing in the, uh, the file uh, and then there's object level storage and this is uh, kind of like S3 in Amazon where you have buckets but you're also going to have tenants and then there's tiers of storage um, and I used to think of this uh, in a different way. I mean, we actually had numbers for them. Um, and it was how slow it was. Um, so flash is really good and fast. Um, it's the best storage. Now, there's different levels of flash, but they're, it's fast. Uh, even then, it's nowhere near as fast as memory. So uh, once again, I'll tell people, be careful over subscribing memory. I've never had a really good experience there. I've been able to get it to kind of work, but I always see slowdowns when I oversubscribe memory because then you're swapping to disk, which flash memory is not as fast as RAM. Then you have hybrid, uh, which is where you have a spinning disk and it can do some stuff on the spinning disk and it has some flash disk as well. I have had nightmare experiences with those. I'm sure there's some good ones. And I know, in fact, I've used some as well, but from an enterprise level, I've had nightmare experience with those. Um, anyway, <laughs> use what you, what you want. Uh, spinning discs are the old platter stuff. Uh, they're becoming less common as we get cheaper flash. Um, but still spinning disc, you can get a lot for a short, uh, for a, and have it inexpensive and then of course long term be they're referring to long term is like tape and stuff which not a lot of people have tape storage on prem anymore on prem uh, at their location um but in the cloud you don't have to worry about all that you don't have to worry about okay if this disk drive fails how do i get another one because they don't even make this anymore um or tape drive you let them worry about it for you and they just store it on tape and then you have to pay a little extra if you access it, but it's really cheap to keep it long term. So on AWS, that's like Glacier. Um, each of these have different input and outputs, read writes, uh, throughput, um, and it just make sure you get what, you, what will work for your system. Uh, I usually see people over uh, pay, so they get something much better than they need. Uh, and that is okay um, as long as it's not a significant amount over. Um, I, I, I still remember a place that uh, spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on um, additional hardware and it was a configuration it, that that they threw lots of hardware at something that that was a simple configuration change. Okay, protocols. So you have, of course, Network File System Protocol, call NFS, and SIFS, um, Common in, for, uh, Internet File System, uh, and then iSCSI. So these are all ways of communicating with this kind of remotely. Um, and then you have Fiber Channel. So this is usually where you're running fiber uh, in, your, in a data center to these different uh, locations. And Non-Volatile Memory Express over Fabrics. Um, so uh, these are all things you should have uh, some familiarity with on how uh, how it would work. Um, when it comes to this, it, it, I find this interesting from a cloud perspective. Oftentimes you don't have to worry about it as much, but in, you do a little bit. Uh, so 
depending on how you use uh, use the date, use the, the cloud. And, and this comes to another one when it comes to cloud. Some of the stuff is redundant and it has redundancy built in. Um, when it comes to RAID, you this is on so many tests. If you've taken A plus or anything like that, you should already have a general understanding of RAID. Um, level zero is just a bunch of disks all thrown together. It's striped. It's fast, but it's not. There's no redundancy built in. It's just disks together. So if you had two disks that were each a gigabyte, we're just going to say that for, so it's easy. You'd have two gigabytes, right? Uh, where if you mirror, you have it for redundancy. It's slower writes because you have to write to two faster reads. Um, because you can read from either. Um, but with that, uh, if you have two one gigabyte hard drives, you only have one usable gigabyte. So uh, five has is parity where it's striped and a mirror. So uh, it's really cool because what happens is if you um, look at the disks, hard drives, in fact, let me pull up a command prompt. Um, This is what I like to do with some of my students here. So if we have a disk and it has one, one, zero, one, one, and we, oh, what am I doing? The I dot text. Okay. If we have a disk that has one, one, <laughs> one, one, zero, one, one. And then we have another disk. Uh, so we're just thinking about bytes. And it has one zero one one one. Okay. What we can do is instead of if we have three, instead of mirroring both of those, we can just say, hey, one plus one is two, but we can only do zero one, so it's zero. One plus zero is one. One plus zero is one. And then one plus one is two, so we have to go back down to zero and zero again. So let's say that this one dies. Okay. So this one right here can then decide what was this by doing the exact same. So let's add one here to zero. So that would make a one. And we take one here, add to one, and that would make a zero, right? Take a zero here, add a one, and that would make a one. Take a one here, add a zero, and that would make a one. Take a one here, add a zero, and that would make a one. Look. This, if this drive died, we just used this to build it uh, again. And the benefit there is instead of needing four drives, we only needed three. Okay. And you can actually expand that out even more. Um, but as you expand it out more, the benefit of that, um, that one gets less because what if you have two failures? So you can actually do it with a second parity. Um, or you can do 10, which is mirrored and striped. So you just uh, duplicate uh, it all. So uh, anyway, there's a lot of different variations. Okay. So advanced features of of, bio, of disk storage. So compress compression. There, there's no reason to store all the zeros and ones if you can compress it down. Um, especially, I mean, if you have a hundred zeros in, in a row, uh, you might be able to do something to know that, right? Um, and it's really, it's it's compressing it at a higher level. So, um, but compression works really well on text, not as much on images and video, um, but there's compression. Deduplication. Um, when you're storing a lot of systems on the same disk, you probably have many, many copies of the operating system. Do you really need to store the operating system over and over again? Uh, you can actually just keep a copy of it. And then if there's any deviations, then you can keep track of the deviations. But you don't have to keep the same file over and over again. So you just reference back to it. Thin provisioning is where you say to a server or a system, here, you have 100 gigs, but you only give it five because it's only using five and then you give it more as it uses more. Now, disk is where I've seen the most bottlenecks on systems. So be very careful here. I've also seen thin provisioning cause performance issues because the system thinks it has space and it goes to use it and it doesn't have it. So the virtualization layer has to then 
find the space, allocate it. And if your disk isn't that fast, that can take long, uh, a long time. And then you have to then use this space. So it just, it's already the bottleneck and you've just increased it more. Now, memory is the bigger one. So that's, once again, I don't like memory going to disk either. Um, so just be careful with some of these. Um, it can be used, it can be used well. I've thin provisioned a lot. Uh, but just realize there will be challenges when you need to use additional space. You, there's additional overhead. Uh, thick provisioning is when you provision all of it. And then you are wasting a lot of space. So there's pros and cons, right? Uh, and then the replicas. So uh, you can also do user quotas where you limit the amount of space someone can use on a system. Uh, there's hyper-converged where there's nodes, storage nodes. Um, I've heard this a lot when people have stuff on prem and in the cloud it is right here, hyper converged. Um, and then there's software defined storage where, um, it's easier to change out what the storage is underneath because there's a virtualization layer. Uh, oftentimes this is, for example, a, a hypervisor, a virtualization, virtualization hypervisor, uh, has virtualized the storage. And if you, if your storage that it was on goes away, it, you be motion it to something else. Uh, it does the system on, uh, on top of it that you're running doesn't even know. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next video.